everybody. I am Dr. Rabia, one of the mentors from Study uh, Medics team. So today I'll be quickly cover uh, covering just uh, some of the topics from the Irish guideline about the critical ill pregnant women. So in this guideline, the terminologies like high dependency, unit of care, and intensive care are replaced by the term critical care unit. So level of the critical care required by the pregnant women uh, depends on a number of the factors like the number of the organs requiring support and the type of the support required as determined by the intensive care society or the intensive care team. Now according to the requirement of a critical ill women in pregnancy, they have the levels, uh, different levels of the care from 0 to four, uh, 3. So there are four different levels. I will be talking uh, just a few points about those. So level 0 means that the patient whose needs can be met through the normal ward care. So level 1 means the patient uh, uh, at the risk of uh, their condition deteriorating and then they need a higher level of observation for or those recently relocated from higher levels of care. Okay, and the level 2 means the patient requiring in, um, invasive monitoring or invasive any sort of intervention that includes support from a single failing organ system. But this should exclude advanced respiratory support. Well, level 3 means that patients requiring advanced respiratory support that will include mechanical ventilation alone or basic respiratory support along with support of at least one additional organ. Now coming, uh, there's, there is some uh, pathway, care pathway for uh, the critical ill pregnant women uh, and uh, there is some component of uh, that care pathway. The first is detection of clinical deteriorating condition in the pregnant women. Uh, now how can we detect uh, the clinical condition uh, that is through IMEOS chart. So what is IMEOS? IMEOS is Irish Maternity Early Warning System score and also through the clinical evaluation. The next step is response. Now response would be by the multidisciplinary team here and that can include the obstetricians, midwifery led, uh, midwif midwife and uh, anesthetist or pediatrician according to the need of the patient. And uh, the component also includes responses A, B, C, D, E. So what is that? We know that airway, securing airway, breathing, respiration, uh, circulation and delivery and early transfer if the patient is in, uh, the patient is already not in the hospital or she is in the primary setting. And uh, after that the patient will be shifted to uh, level 2 care. The level 2 care can be the delivery suit, can be the maternity hospital and uh, even if uh, she deteriorates more. Uh, after basic resuscitative measures, then then the uh, then the care pathway will take towards the level three care, which means that uh, intensive care unit, or which means that critical care services. Now, this immune chart is not just for uh, the 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 pregnant women, but also it uh, it it is implemented for the post uh, natal admissions or the post natal uh, patients as well. Uh, in this guideline, they have uh, mentioned about some of very important uh, point about the proper communication um, uh, to different, I mean, departments and the di among different colleagues uh, about the high risk patient. And they said that it is important to optimize the communication of critical information as an essential component of the patient care, safety, and the risk management. So the communication, uh, they use a tool. Uh, for the proper communication within different teams and they inform the tool, I mean they call this tool as the IS, IS bar tool. So what is IS bar? IS bar uh, stands for I is for identification, S is for situation, B is for background, A is for assessment and R is for recommendation. So what is the identification? Identification is to identify yourself and your role to the person you are communicating with in the communication. Situation means describe the specific situation about a particular patient including name, consultant, patient location, 
vital signs and resuscitation status and any specific concerns you have regarding the patient. Coming to the background, background means communicate the patient's background history including the date of admission, uh, what's her diagnosis, current medication, any allergies, any laboratory investigations that has been performed for this patient and progress during the course of her admission and any relevant information. Now assessment. This involves critical assessment of the situation, clinical impression and detailed expression of the concern. Now recommendation. Recommendation includes the management plan, suggestion for care, details of investigation request and expected time frame. So they mentioned that implementing ISBAR takes considerable training for an individual and the organization. And uh, according to um, this guideline, they say the ISBAR, by mentioning the ISBAR tool, it's a way of improving communication between the different teams so that uh, the proper care, uh, the care of the patient should not be uh, compromised. And thank you so much.